विवेक चूड़ामणि प्रेजेंटेड बाय स्वयं प्रकाश शर्मा पार्ट ट्वेंटी कंक्लूजन दिस इज द कंक्लूडिंग पार्ट ऑफ विवेक चूड़ामणि कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ द रिमेनिंग वर्सेस वर्सेस 549 हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी नाइन टू फाइव हंड्रेड एंड एट्टी इन विच द टीचर कंक्लूड हिज डिस्कोर्स ऑन हाउ टू रियलाइज ब्रह्म ऑन हाउ टू रियलाइज द आत्मा through discriminating between the real and the unreal vivek chudamani the teacher takes his discourse towards conclusion he says you should know that in reality the realized sage rests discarding the body like a snake discards its skin the sage discards his body by ceasing to identify with it and then his body is moved here and there by the forces of pran vayu by the forces of the vital forces just as a piece of wood that floats on the water is carried by the current of the water either to a high ground or to a low ground in the same way the body too is carried by the momentum of prarabd by the momentum of past actions to the various different experiences of the fruits of those actions as these present themselves in due course the man of realization who is without the body idea who has stopped identifying with the body and who no longer considers the body to be his he moves among the sense enjoyments like a man subject to transmigration through the desires that are caused by his prarabd work through the desires that are caused by the work done by him in his previous births he himself however lives his life unmoved in the body like a witness free from all mental oscillations like the fixed pivot on which the potter's wheel moves the man of realization he neither directs the sense organs to their objects nor does he detach the sense objects from their objects but stays like an unconcerned spectator he does not care for the fruits of actions since his mind is thoroughly intoxicated since his mind is thoroughly drunk with drinking the undiluted nectar of the bliss of the atma the person who has given up all considerations of the fitness or otherwise of the objects of meditation who is not bothered about the fitness or otherwise of the objects of meditation and who lives as the absolute atma he is verily shiv himself and he is the best among the knowers of brahm through the destruction of limitations the perfect knower of brahm is merged in the one brahm is merged in the one without a second which in fact he had been all along even while he is still living and he attains the goal of his life just as an actor when he puts on the dress of his role when he puts on the costume of his role or when he does not when he is acting his part or when he is not acting his part he is always the person that he is in exactly the same way the perfect knower of brahm is always brahm and nothing else the sanyasi who has realized his identity with brahm his body may wither and fall away like the leaf of a tree it is of no consequence to him it does not matter to him because for him this body has already been burnt by the fire of knowledge and he does not have and he does not even care if any funeral rites are performed for the body or not 
द सेज हु ऑलवेज लिव्स एज इन फाइनाइट ब्लिस इन द रियलिटी दैट इज ब्रह्म हु लिव्स एज द वन विदाउट अ सेकेंड सच ए सेज डज नॉट डिपेंड ऑन द कस्टमरी कंसिडरेशन ऑफ प्लेस ऑफ टाइम एंड सो ऑन फॉर गिविंग अप दिस मास ऑफ स्किन फ्लैश एंड फिल्थ which is called the body such a man of realization may give up his body at any place and at any time for the body has already served its purpose and it is of no further use to him you must understand that the giving up of the body is not liberation nor in the case of the sanyasi is the giving up of the outward distinguishing symbols such as the staff the water bowl the begging bowl and so on are liberation they are not liberation liberation on the other hand consists in the destruction of the knot of ignorance the knot which binds the heart and the intellect of the sanyasi giving up physical attributes is not liberation whether the leaf of a tree whether it falls in a small stream whether it falls in a river or whether it falls in a place that has been blessed by shiv or whether it falls on a crossing of a road it does not affect the tree in any way it does not have any good or any evil effect on the tree for the man of realization the destruction of the body the destruction of the organs the destruction of the pranas or the vital forces and the destruction of the buddhi or intellect the destruction of all these is like the destruction of a leaf of a flower or of a fruit for a tree such a destruction does not in any way affect the atma the reality the embodiment of bliss which is the true nature of the atma and just as the tree survives the destruction of its leaf its flower and its fruit in the same way the atma also survives the destruction of the body the organ the pranas and the buddhis the shruti of the brid aranyak upanishad when it describes the real nature of the atma in the words the atma is the embodiment of knowledge and so on words which indicate the reality of the atma they all speak of the destruction of the apparent limitations of the atma and not of the atma itself it is only the apparent limitations of the atma that are destroyed and not the atma which can never be destroyed the shruti passage of the brit daranik aranya upanishad which says verily the atma is immortal my dear it is indestructible by its very nature this tells about the immortality of the atma in the middle of things that are perishable and subject to change just as a stone a tree grass paddy husk cloth and the like all are reduced to ashes when they are burnt in much the same way the objective universe consisting of the body the organs the prans the mind and so forth they all are also burnt by the fire of realization and reduced to brahm just as darkness which is distinct from sunshine just as that darkness vanishes and dissolves in the radiance in the light of the sun in the same way the whole objective universe also dissolves in brahm when a jar is broken then the space that was enclosed by the jar in the jar that space space then merges with the outside space and becomes in reality 
itself the limitless infinite space. In the same way, when the apparent limitations which enclose a person, when those limitations are destroyed, then the knower of Brahm in fact becomes Brahm himself. Milk that is poured into milk becomes milk. Oil that is poured into oil becomes oil. Water that is poured into water becomes water. In the same way, the sage who has realized the Atma, he too, when he becomes united with the Atma, he becomes the Atma himself. In this way, realizing the extreme isolation that comes because of disembodiedness and becoming eternally identified with the absolute reality that is Brahm, the sage no longer suffers transmigration. He is never born again. Because his gross, his subtle and his causal bodies, which consist of ignorance and the like, because all his bodies having been burnt by the realization of the identity of the Jeev, the individual soul, and Brahm, the universal soul, he becomes Brahm himself. Then, how can Brahm ever have rebirth? Both bondage and liberation are conjured by Maya. They do not really exist in the Atma which is a person's reality, just as the appearance or the appearance of the snake do not exist, do not abide in the rope, which remains what it is, a rope, and which suffers no change on account of the appearance or of the disappearance of a snake in it because of delusion. Bondage and liberation may be spoken of only when there is the presence or the absence of a covering veil. But there can be no covering veil for Brahm, which is always uncovered for want of a second thing besides itself. If there should be a second, then the non-duality of Brahm would be contradicted and the Shrutis can never tolerate any duality. The Shrutis very categorically and clearly declare that there is never any duality in Brahm. Bondage and liberation, both are attributes of the intellect. Which attributes ignorant people falsely superimpose on the reality that is Brahm? Just as the covering of the eyes by a cloud is transferred to the sun. Know for sure that this immutable Brahm is knowledge absolute, is the one without a second and is unattached. The idea that bondage exists and the idea that bondage does not exist, both these ideas which are with reference to the reality that is Brahm, both these ideas are only attributes of the intellect. They never belong to the eternal reality that is Brahm. This bondage and this liberation, both are created by Maya. They are not in the Atma. How can there be any idea of limitation with regard to the Supreme Truth, which is without parts, which is without activity, which is calm, which is unimpeachable, which is taintless and which is one without a second, just as there can be no idea of limitation with regard to the infinite sky. There is neither death nor is there birth. There is neither a bound soul nor is there a, str a struggling soul. There is neither a seeker after liberation nor is there a liberated one. This is the ultimate truth. I have today repeatedly revealed to you, just as one would reveal to one's own son, 
the excellent and profound secret of the discrimination between the real and the unreal which is the innermost meaning of vedant which is the crest of the vedas which i have done considering you an aspirant after liberation who has been purged who has been cleansed of the taints of the dark age and whose mind is free from desires hearing these words of the guru the disciple then prostrated himself before the guru he took the guru's blessing and permission and went his way freed from bondage and the guru with his mind steeped in the ocean of existence and bliss absolute all differentiating differentiating ideas banished from his mind roamed the world verily purifying the whole world in this way by means of a dialogue between the teacher and the disciple the nature of the atma has been ascertained the nature of the atma has been determined and explained for the easy comprehension of seekers after liberation may those people who are struggling for realization may those people who are seekers after liberation may those people who have purged themselves of all taints of the mind by the observance of the prescribed methods and who are averse to worldly pleasures who are serene minds and who take delight in the shruti may they appreciate this salutary teaching for those people of the world who are scorched by the threefold misery the misery that comes from the body and the mind such as pain and sorrow the misery that comes from the acts of nature such as earthquakes and cyclones and the misery that comes from other creatures of the world for such people and for those people who because of delusion wander about as if in a desert in search of water seeing mirages and being lured by the prospect of happiness from transitory things for all such people here is the triumphant message of shankar the message which shows everyone the soothing ocean of nectar that is brahm the one without a second which is within easy reach of everyone and which leads them to liberation yes here is the triumphant message of shankar the message which shows everyone the soothing ocean of nectar that is brahm the one without a second which is within the easy reach of everyone and which leads them to liberation yes which leads everyone to liberation this concludes vivek chudamani consisting of 580 verses and which has been presented here in 20 parts om shanti 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 om